Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. I'm taking the opportunity to start this video now and the rain and the hail have stopped, unbelievably. It's April and it feels like winter, but never mind, we're going to paint some spring. If spring won't arrive, we'll, we'll drag it in by its heels. Um, I've got here my Kuretake paints and I've picked out the pastel versions of the colours that seem a little bit spring-like and I'm going to really cop out this morning and just paint some shapes onto the paper and then to doodle um, spring-type flowers and things like that on top in whatever comes to hand. So here we go again. You can't hear me speaking. I'm sorry about that, but um, so I'm I'm going to paint sort of ovals, a little bit sort of egg-like theme maybe. I don't really know where this is going to go um, because I haven't done it before. So this is an experiment, and uh, so just sort of baby pastel type colours here on the pink spectrum. Now I've got blues and greens here as well, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use those. Um, I don't know, we'll see how this goes. I don't really know what I'm doing yet. So we go to the mauves as well, the sort of soft purpley pinks and things. This is one of those, uh, one of those uh, things that we'll try out and if it, it doesn't work then I won't show you it. <laughs> um, but this is kind of like a background isn't it? I mean you, you could make all of these individual circles more de defined and separate them, leave gaps between, but um, it, it probably suits my nature more to have them running into one another. I'm not, I'm not a, a cut and dried person, I'm a bit more of a all over the place person. And so uh, that's what we're going to get, a little bit all over the place. But not quite, quite so, not perhaps quite so violent as that. So we let them run. And um, let me see what colour is that. That's a muddy brown kind of thing. Perhaps we'll add a bit more pink to that to make it a bit pinker. There we are. This is a really good way to explore your paint box. I'm painting in a um, um, Canson XL mixed media um, sketchbook. This is mixed media paper. It's not the normal Canson that everybody's used to. Um, so it's, it's much thicker, it's got more texture and it's actually really rather nice to paint on. And it's very resistant to uh, ill treatment. So what we could do here is we could emphasize these colors a little bit by dropping in some, um, some emphasis. Uh, so just darken them down a little bit, in other words, where it's going to run, hopefully, and uh, just give a bit more texture. You could, if you wanted to at this point, of course, um, you could add things like salt and all those sorts of things to give you more texture as well. Or you can just leave it as a very soft, um, blurry sort of background, which is I think what I'm going to do. And you know, when this is done, if actually I might come down a little bit further, I'm thinking bookmarks. I was going to say actually, um, quite a few people have bought paintings because we are selling the paintings for $50 each, all the original uh, art that I've done over the last three years. Um, I'm uh, offering it to people for sale. 
Um, and when I send out a, a package with painting in, I'm sending a hand-painted bookmark as well as a special little free gift. And these, when cut up, would make bookmarks, I think, as well, in case you're a bookmark-making person. Like that, so we'll lift it out. That's the benefit of this paper, is you can easily lift things out. So I think that'll do for a nice wishy-washy background. And I'm going to whack the hairdryer on that and then come back with some doodles. So there we are, that's nice and dry. So what I need to do now is stop hesitating and take the plunge and do something. Um, so let's see, what shall we do? Let's do some flowers. That's original, isn't it? Um, let's, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint in strips. So I'm going to just uh, hope for the best. And uh, I'm gonna put in, here we are, some slightly orangey things. And uh, let's put in some pink and let's let it mix and mingle. And uh, as we come down the page, keeping it narrow so that it's, um, what's the word, uh, bookmark shaped. And then we'll pick up some green, some fairly dark green. And then I'm going to put in some stems. Believe me, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing at this point in time. We'll put in some leaves. Okay, and maybe we'll put a leaf or two up here. And uh, on here, perhaps. And um, maybe some green here. And in here, perhaps. Okay, and let's continue the flowers down here a little bit. And then we want to pick up a bit more green. Don't want to go too far over, so we'll just come over here a little bit. And um, <clears throat> let's see, another leaf here, all nice and runny, perhaps, and maybe one more here. And then what we can do is if we think it's a bit too heavy in places where it's running, just dry your brush off with a piece of paper towel, kitchen roll, kitchen towel, tissue, cloth, just lift out. That way you get a bit more texture and uh, a little bit more control. And if you want to, then once that's a little bit drier, you can come in with a pen and uh, do some embellishments into that. So I'm just going to dry it. Okay, so we can um, put in some veins into the leaves with white, like this, and then you can, you know, do the usual thing which lifts it, definitely. This kind of design would be um, good for uh, journal fodder and so on as well. This pen's quite interesting. It gives a dot at the end when you lift up, so that's quite nice. And then we can do more sort of petal shapes here if we want. Like that. You could do them in black if you wanted. That's another way to go. But I kind of like the um, slightly more subtle thing. And then you could, if you wanted to, 
put a gold border around. So I'm using the, the last of my starry colours here. This is Kuretake paint as well. And I'm just waking this up and making myself a nice thick uh, thing here. So that will hopefully... Um, hopefully go round if I am lucky. So let's see if I can make this work. Whoops. Oh, that went a bit wonky. Never mind. There are days, aren't there, when, and today's obviously one of those days, when things don't go as easily or as neatly as you thought they might. But I think that's basically okay. And then what we'll do next is, of course, cut it out. So we'll see how that looks. Okay, so here's um, that one finished. I've cut it out. I know the line around the outside is pretty ugly, but um, I'm sure you could do better than that. But I'm quite pleased with the way the flowers came out anyway. So that's a potential bookmark. And um, now for the second one, I think I'm going to start with a pen, I think. So let's find um, something interesting. What about this Fudenosuke Tombow uh, brush pen? And um, I'm going to try again to stay within a line. And um, let's just do something really simple. It's easy to do leaves. I think once you've got the hang of leaves, you won't want to stop doing them there very rewarding. I think it's because they're a food item and you can eat them. So they're kind of reassuring to paint and draw. They're also very interesting graphically and you can change them up, do all sorts of different things with them or almost nothing if you want. And uh, these brushes are really rather nice. These Tombow brushes do thick and thin lines, which are great. And when you're feeling like I am at the moment, a, a bit artistically challenged, um, I had a, a kind of allergic uh, day a couple of days ago. This always happens up to me in the spring. And I don't know whether it was something I ate or um, probably it's just that the trees are starting to do their thing. So you look forward to the spring and then when it comes, you think, oh no, I remember, ha <laughs> ha, hay fever, yes. So anyway, I, uh, I lose my marbles when this happens to me and I become kind of fuzzy headed and generally pretty useless. So uh, yeah, and now I'm going to put some flowers in between because I think it needs them. So let's put some some one, two, three, four, five. I'm not going to say five until I've counted them. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and so that's that. And then uh ta -ti -da -ti -da paintbrush. Now, is this going to run or is Kuretake going to be kind? And what colour green shall I use? A soft green, I suppose, because something like this. Yeah, it's going to run a bit because it's not very dry. Going too fast. But never mind, because I quite like it like that. And then let's do some lilac-y coloured flowers, perhaps. Let me just kind of go over them to the side. And 
then maybe we will get the gold pen out and do a few spirals. I think that'll do for that one. Grab a knife. Cut. There we are, number two. Two completely different ideas. Number three. Are you still with me? Uh, let's see, what shall we do for number three? I'm going to take the brown pen, that is to say, one of these Winsor & Newton sepia ones, 5.5, and let's do some lavender, shall we? Shall we just do a line up here like this and then... That was a quick one. And we need some lilac colour, I suppose, since it's lavender. And we'll just pop that in like that. Very light. Hardly there at all. If you were doing a lot of these for sale and so on, you wouldn't want a method that was very finickety. Um, there's that lady on, um, uh, she does it on TikTok, uh, Hannah Pickerel, her name is, and she sells bookmarks that she paints and she, she's not bad, she's very young, but for her age, she's not bad. She's going to probably be quite a good painter one day. Um, but she does these bookmarks. They take ages to do. I can tell that they take ages to do and she sells them. I don't know, they're not that cheap, but they're not that dear. They're not really, it's not really very cost effective. Because of your time being precious. And we all know about time being precious, don't we? So there's that one. And I think the thing is, as you go along with doing something like this, you'll find a way that, you know, works. And for goodness sake, don't copy me, find your own way. I can't even cut a piece of paper. Yeah, so there's that one. And uh, still got more to go, but I'm liking them better now than I was at the beginning. You get into the flow eventually. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. Um, I'm going to get a um, script liner brush. This is a long bladed thing. Um, you don't need this, you don't need to use this at all, but if you've got one, it's useful. Otherwise, just use an ordinary rigger. A rigger being a brush like this. Oops. Just an ordinary round brush, but with longer hairs than usual. That will do the trick too. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flick in some grasses, it could be. There's a, a lot of randomness going on here. 
but bearing in mind what we always say, less is more. And then I'm going to put in some blobs of colour up here, not too many. You always want to go totally bonkers with this. And then we'll do some squirrely flowers over the top of that paint, potentially sacrificing our pen and a few more squiggles and perhaps a few sort of leaf things. Maybe a few dots. And then we will cut that one off the production line. There we are. And the next one, come in number five. Okay, so let's put a, let's go back to that lilac-y blob thing and we'll just put a blob of colour there and a blob of colour there. And then what I'm going to do is draw two stems, one, two, and a few leaves. Like that. And then what I need this to do is to dry. As you can see, it's curled because I've just whacked the hairdryer on it. Um, but that's fine, doesn't matter. Um, so let's just put some scribbly petals in here like that. And some scribbly petals in here like that. And then we need the green. So we'll pop off and get some green. Two more flowers. Okay, and then, so you'll have a set by the time you get to the end of this. You'll have a little set of uh, bookmarks. So let's do some, do it this way around this time. And then I'm just going to bring the stems down. Like that. And then I'm going to do some leaves down here. And then the colour. We have gone quite sort of purpley, so maybe this one perhaps we'll do pink. And then green. All of these could be embellished further and with things like spatter and so on and so forth. But uh, it's just some ideas. We all need ideas, don't we? It's sometimes really difficult to, uh, to get started. So I'm going to disregard the very first one and I'm going to say we have a set of four. One, two, three, four bookmarks. The first one and two were a bit dodgy. This one probably needs a bit more of a trim, but uh, 
There we are. Four fantasy flowers, nice loose background, put your hole down here and a nice tag made of string or something like that. And you've got a lovely set of rustic watercolour, handmade, floral, for a gardener. Put a message on. For example, you could say, um, where's my pen gone? Here we are. Um, I quite, no, I want a thinner one than that. Um, I quite like uh, writing on the thing itself, following the line. So you could write every thing in the garden is lovely even the beads. So there we are, there's a message. And you can do that kind of thing, you could make up better messages than mine. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you understand what I was doing there, which was to show you that when you start off with a complete block, total block, just do something. And if you say to yourself, yeah, right, but that was ugly. Okay, it's ugly. It's gone. The next one will be better. And at the end of it, you might find that you've created something that you're not half uh, unhappy with. So if you like this, give it a like and subscribe. Join the 102,000 subscribers that we have and um, join Patreon and support us or join the YouTube membership and support us. Don't forget the Facebook group, which you get to belong to um, if you're a member. And uh, it's a private group with about three or 400 special people in it. And um, I will let you go finally. And I'll see you again soon. So bye, everybody. Bye-bye for now.